Okay, let's get started. So I'm trying something a little new today. This could be great or it could be awful. We'll find out. Uh, usually when I record my uh, Adobe Captivate tutorials, I do so with, uh, um, with another instance of Adobe Captivate running because it also is my uh, recording tool. For, for creating these tutorials. Today I'm going to be working with Adobe Video Presenter Express. Did I get that right? Adobe Presenter Video Express. That's correct, yeah. And we're trying that out and this, uh, I you may never see this because it might be not suitable for how I record my videos. But then again, it could be the best thing ever. So what we're going to talk about today is working with workspaces and uh, specifically how it can decrease your development time and improve your productivity. And I've recently had an experience where I had to sit down with the course that you see on your screen right now. And this is a course that I'm working for, uh, working on for a client. And um, unlike many of my other courses, uh, this course required a regular narration rather than a text-to-speech narration, uh, which I'm happy about because of course that makes for a better quality product. Um, so I had to go through and record all the narration on all of my slides. And, uh, this became an opportunity to experiment with workspaces. I really don't work with workspaces traditionally. Um, but I wanted to set up Adobe Captivate in such a way that it was perfect for sitting in front of my computer and recording uh, narration with my microphone set up and so on. So the first thing I did, um, I'm currently set up with my standard workspace and this is a workspace that I've grown to use. You can see I've got all my properties panels open. I've got a film strip, the master slide, the object state, my slide notes at the bottom, the timeline as well, and I can switch back and forth between all of these items as I see fit. And this is just sort of my general workspace. But there's obviously an opportunity to, um, there's obviously an opportunity to take advantage of, um, uh, you know, organizing my workspace a little bit better. So I'm going to start to do that. I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, there's a few things that you don't need. And that was how, that's sort of what I came to is that the best way to build your workspace for a particular workflow or a particular set of tasks is to eliminate the aspects of your of your workspace that you don't need for that particular task. So for recording narration, I don't need an alignment toolbar. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, that's going to increase my other areas for me. I'm not really going to need the film strip. I'll leave that you know that that's an optional thing it might be useful for for navigating to the different slides but quite frankly you have the controls at the top and you can use page up and page down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off the film strip in this case here now i still have my slide master and my state object sometimes these items you just can't simply check them off from the window uh, i can do that with the master slide but for whatever reason, the state view isn't there. The way I found to get rid of certain things is to detach them from their normal spot. And that's going to give you an X control in the upper right hand corner. This may look slightly different on a Mac, of course, and the, the procedure might change a little bit. But, you know, I am going to keep my, my, uh, my, my stage view, uh, for lack of a better word. I don't need the timeline, but I will need the slide notes. So I'm going to turn off the timeline, uncheck that. But the location of the slide notes is not really conducive to where I'm going to want it. So I'm going to leave that for now, but let's get rid of, I don't need anything over here, quite frankly. My properties inspector, my timing panel, library quiz, drag and drop position. I can get rid of all of those. And, um, you know, if they're not visible here, um, you know, as you can see, I can uncheck them. Like I said, the other way you can get rid of them is to just simply uh, undock them and uh, then close them manually. So keep slide notes. I'm going to uncheck, drag and drop. I'm left with the position panel. And as you can see, there's no way to turn that off. So again, I've learned that if I did detach it or or um, undock it and then I can close it manually here. 
And I was sort of thinking about the layout and, you know, how would I want my slide notes to appear? Well, some of these slides have more slide notes than others. And this is where my, uh, in this case, the closed captioning is already written and I'll adjust it later. But um, so one of the things is you can undock the slide notes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this off to the right here and attach it over here. So I can see a preview of the slide I'm working on, and I can see because I've, I've used the full height of the uh, the interface, I can see all the text to speech that I need to record for this particular slide. And pretty much, you know, other than maybe uh, adjusting the size of each, you might not need such a large preview. Um, but because of where the, my microphone is situated, Actually, this narration works out well because I'm looking past my microphone and therefore uh, my mouth is, is close enough to the microphone to get a good recording. So, this is great. I've totally messed up my Adobe Captivate here. So what you can do though is using this control up here in the upper right hand corner is you can create a new workspace and you can call it whatever you want. So. In this case here, I will call this narration. Oh, too many O's there. Narration. It's hard to type and record at the same time. Click OK. And so now this is going to be my narration interface. And I can quickly go back to my standard interface as I see fit. So you can create a workspace for every single workflow that you work on. Um, for me, I've always gotten used to the interface just sort of being standard. But, you know, in this case, uh, because I hadn't done a narration workflow before, uh, or very seldom, I should say, I didn't bother to create a workspace. So now I have a, a narration workspace that I can quickly go to. And again, this is all about productivity. It's all about rapid development. If you can just strip down Captivate to just the need to have elements on your screen, uh, it makes it much easier to work with. The other thing that you have access to, of course, is you can always reset narration if you've gone and messed it up. You can create additional new workspaces, and then you have a manage workspace uh, view, which allows you to go in and rename or delete the different workspaces that you've created. So pretty uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with uh, working with workspaces, and I think it would be a recommended best practice for all of you as well. Guys, if you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, Hire me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.